All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to mod with the new built-in mods for Baldur's Gate 3. So the simple answer is, as of, like, patch 7 or somewhere in there, they added mod support natively to Baldur's Gate 3, which means that you can just go to this new mod manager section of the base game, without having any additional stuff installed, and it will do all of the work for you. Clicking on this, you can search through a whole bunch of different categories of mods, from cheats to UI changes, extra subclasses or spells. All of these different things are available to your heart's content. And then all you need to do to install them is click on the install or subscribe button. If you might notice that I'm currently have different buttons than you, that's because I signed up for an account. They recommend you do that in order to better utilize some of these mods. I'm not really sure which ones, but it might be a good idea just to have that set up so you don't have to worry about it in the future. Then when you're ready, you can just click on the subscribe button or like click the actual mod itself for more information so you can see some of the pictures. And then you can decide for yourself if this is a mod that you want. It'll also list any potential uh, conflicts that that mod might have with other mods in the system. Although I can't read the description in here because of all of the different tags that this mod has. So that's a little bit derpy. But other mods like, I don't know, uh, the adjustable party limit mod will tell you how it works and what might cause problems when you're using it. And do note that when you're trying to mod and play multiplayer, if you want to play with your friends, all of the people wanting to play have to have the same mods as the person who created the multiplayer lobby. It'll also tell you in the top of the screen, depending on how many mods you have installed, if you're concerned about how much memory it's using up on your system, it will tell you how much memory is being used up at the top here next to your little login button how much space is being currently used. And it's really easy to just kind of go through here and search for like, I don't know, let's do like spells. I want more spells. So we can add a hundred new D and D spells from mistress spells to our game, which is like a 78 megabyte download. Most of these are really tiny downloads. I don't think a lot of these are particularly big. And then once you've got a bunch of them that you want installed and set up, by just clicking in subscribe, you can go in and play with them to your heart's content. Uh, I also recommend making a fresh save if you install a boatload of mods. Installing mods and then using them on a save that you didn't use mods on before can potentially cause problems and corrupt your save. It might actually, I don't know if you can back up your Baldur's Gate 3 saves, but if you can, you might want to do that. That said, if there's stuff that you just downloaded or you tried and you don't like it anymore or it causes problems, you can always come back to this menu and go to the installed tab. And here you can do one of two things. You can disable the mod. So like, let's say you want to keep your achievements running on your single player, but you don't care in multiplayer. Uh, you can come through here and disable the mods. So they're not currently running. So you can play vanilla on your single player and then re-enable them one at a time with this check mark in order to play with it with your friends in multiplayer. Alternatively, if you don't like the mod, you can cl click on it and then click unsubscribe, which will automatically remove it from your computer. Alternatively, if there's something really funky going on with the mod or there's something like bad going on with the mod, like maybe they snuck something weird into it. It's not supposed to be there. You can report it with the report button. But otherwise, it's just as easy as a single button click for most of not all of these mods in order to get them installed and running. It's just like using the Steam Workshop mods, but inside of Baldur's Gate 3. So that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a brief look at how to add mods with one click through the new Baldur's Gate mod manager. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.